I'm a little bit lost for words after that. I was just walking up here. <laughs> that might be my first ever LaFerrari Aperta on the road. Yes guys, what is up? Welcome to Supercars of London and welcome back to Monaco in the Twizzy. And today is quite a weird day because we're in this limbo period between Monaco F1 Grand Prix weekend and top marks. Very much like the period in between Christmas and New Year. No one knows what day it is, no one knows what to do, no one knows what's going on. But I'm heading down into the city centre because, of course, I'm going to go car spotting. The weather is fantastic, but I didn't want to just do a generic car spotting video. I wanted to attach it to something tangible. I wanted to compare costs. I was thinking about what can I do than just bringing you guys a car spotting video. And you guys well know that I've been doing videos with First Point Insurance, my insurance broker that have been insuring my car since the BMW M3 all the way up to my Lamborghini Murcielago. And seeing as they do performance cars and supercars, they also quote hypercars on a weekly basis. And more recently, they have just insured a very expensive Swedish hypercar for over a hundred thousand pounds. So it kind of played around in my head that there is a challenge there. Can Monaco produce a car that is more expensive to insure than a Koenigsegg? So that is exactly what we're going to do today. And throughout the video, I'm going to refer back to First Point to try and give you some accurate quotes and accurate costs associated to some of the cars that we're seeing whilst I car spot for the next 12 hours. Archie Hamilton, hello. Oh, this looks nice. This is a bit of seen through glass. Dark green, Bentley Continental GT. Very, very nice. I'm a little bit lost for words after that. I was just walking up here. <laughs> that might be my first ever LaFerrari Aperta on the road. What a baller. We may be in the middle of a wild goose chase or we may be on to an absolute winner. I've just had a tip off that underground there is the ultimate when it comes to modern classic supercars and hypercars. But also, when it comes to car insurance, I think this is guaranteed, given its value, going to top the Swedish hypercar because I look quite casual whilst I'm doing this because if it's not there, then we'll just carry on with the vlog. But I'm on my way to try and hunt down a McLaren F1. We're being told to stop filming. directed underground and there it is with the Portofino that I just filmed so I carry on going I'm just gonna carry on going and see how I get on because there are some people here taking photos oh my god there's a TDF as well 488 
Jesus. I might have to get a picture of this. There we go, that is the holy grail of supercars and hypercars. As cool as that Aston Martin RB003 is, I'm not gonna count it, I'm not gonna take that into consideration, uh, cons talking about how much that's gonna cost to insure, because they're not even out on the road yet, no one knows exactly how much they're gonna cost, and that one obviously doesn't work, because they're pushing it on the little car trolley things. some calculations given that my Lamborghini insurance premium for a year is four and a half grand and the value of one of them is 15 million quid my Lamborghini is insured at around 200,000 pounds so calculation wise I could probably extrapolate that the given my circumstances the age of 28 parking where I park it how many miles I do because obviously insurance is based on all of that that McLaren F1 could cost me around half a million pound for the 12 months. That's just insane, but then the price of it is ridiculous, 15 million quid. Just as the TDF arrives at Ferrari, this drives past. All of the car spotters up there are going to be freaking out right about now. Let's try and zoom in. Okay, that was ridiculous. Firstly, TDF running no plates driving on public roads. Not sure how that would run down with insurance, but then coming on here, parking up, it's probably getting collected by a customer and then a Ferrari F40 driving past. Now that car is probably around 1.2 million pounds and I actually had a friend of mine who had a Ferrari F40 and I do remember that his insurance premium was probably around the price that I paid for my Audi R8 just to drive it for one year. So once you start getting into seven figures the insurance premium obviously goes up because things going wrong when the cars crash like all of these parts and getting them replaced it's going to be such a heavy cost for that insurance company to take the hit that they've got to cover themselves but also give you a sensible policy so that you can drive it around without that weight on your shoulder of what happens if I crash it. Now that is a proper car. That's our old Bentley. What's it doing down here? Yes, he is worth it. Aventador S with a wing. And an E63 or E63 wagon. All oh, that Aventador was lovely. And I am purposefully not trying to follow this Aventador, but here it is somewhere else. 
I think now is as good as any time to quickly touch base with you guys after a conversation that I've had with First Point. I was on the phone for about 10 minutes trying to find out as much information as I can about how insurance works because it is so situational and it can vary so much depending on how many cars you have insured, how many cars are in one particular garage, how secure that particular garage is. But what we did find out is that if I was to just transfer my policy from the Lamborghini across to a McLaren F1, I can hear a V12 rumble somewhere. It's not the Aventador though. If I was to transfer my Lamborghini Murcielago across to a McLaren F1 and keep that one car, the ballpark figure would be around 150 to 250 thousand pounds. So not quite 400 thousand pounds, which I calculated earlier, but that's still a hell of a lot of money. And it also beats the Koenigsegg, which is First Point's highest insurance premium that they've ever done. However, what I did learn on this phone call is that First Point actually have a McLaren F1 insured with them or through them. But the owner's circumstances are obviously different to mine. He probably has a huge fleet of cars. Something's driving around. And in fact, this McLaren F1 that is insured through First Point is less than 20 grand a year for the premium. <laughs> that sounds cheap for a car that's over 10 million pounds. But yeah, circumstantial, everything is different and it's almost impossible to get ballpark quotes for cars that you don't own. Super successful day in Monaco then, LaFerrari Aperta, TDF, F40, McLaren F1, and a whole bunch of normal supercars. But down there, it is just a hive for incredible machines and that is why I love being down here. And also, hopefully you found it quite an interesting insight into car insurance with some of these cars. I know I enjoy talking about running costs and it's always insightful. When I was going out and spotting in London, I would have loved to have heard about all of the different costs associated to supercars so that I could be a little bit more prepared for where I am right now in this ridiculous world where I actually own a Lamborghini Murcielago. But, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow I go down to Lamborghini Monaco to collect a Urus. So for the next week, that is gonna be my daily driver. Quite ridiculous. The weather's amazing. Thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Head into the link in the description so you can check out First Point. If you've got a performance supercar or hypercar, then make sure you go and check that link in the description so that you can get a quote because honestly, they are the best in the business and I wouldn't go anywhere else, which is why I'm telling you guys and also why I insure my cars. There are so many cars driving around in the mountains. I will see you soon, guys. Take care. Goodbye.